time-restricted feeding in an eight-hour eating window. So time-restricted feeding is just like it sounds. It's where you're restricting the amount of time you eat, you're consolidating it into a specific period of time. In this case, I wanna focus on what is called a 16-8. That means you're fasting for 16 hours and you have eight hours of, well, a consolidated eating window. Now, there's a lot of different goals that you can set when it comes down to 16-8 fasting, all right? 16-8 time-restricted feeding, fasting, potato, potato. I think the main thing that I want to really put out there is, sure, it's great for weight loss, but I think the biggest piece is it's just great for functionality. Having an eight hour consolidated eating window just gives you flexibility to be able to eat a little bit more of the foods that you like, but also gives you long enough periods of time to still get adequate nutritional value in. Now, additionally, you can have all kinds of benefits when it comes down to cognition, right? You feel more cognitively alert. And it's simply because when you eat, your body is having to divert blood flow to your gut then that's gonna take away from brain function a little bit. It's just the way it goes. So there's a lot of various reasons as to why you might do this. But hey, I do want you to check out Zero Fasting because they have a couple of really cool challenges going on in August that allow you to practice the 16-8 time-restricted feeding. It also is gonna allow you to stay very accountable because you have this community aspect with Zero, but it's also going to allow you to earn specific badges when you reach specific goals. So just highly recommend it. I put a link down below. So this is going to be for the month of August. We're really focusing on that 16-8 time-restricted feeding when it comes down to Zero Fasting. So again, that link is down below and that can take you to the app store so you can check it out. One of the coolest pieces of Zero Fasting too is that you're able to fast with friends. So that way, if you know someone that's fasting, you can share your data with them. You can have that fasting timer, you can encourage each other, you can cheer each other on. Okay, now let's focus on what you may want to do during your eating period to get a little bit more out of your fast. What I don't want you to fall into is this habit of reducing calories dramatically during your eating period. Because then what happens is you fall into this cycle of just caloric restriction. See, fasting is beneficial because yes, you can lose weight, but you're not losing weight because you're restricting calories during your eating window. You're losing weight because you're restricting calories or not consuming any calories during your fasting period. So people make the mistake of trying to still crunch down as the calories they're consuming while they're actually eating. You really wanna have very clear and defined fasting and feasting periods. And when you focus on that and focus on getting adequate amounts of food in, it makes it a lot easier to get adequate nutrition in, right? To get the right kind of micronutrients that we need as well. So what I would recommend is when you break your fast, keep it very simple. Lean, clean, protein, very easy, just do that. Then an hour or so later, then start adding more things in the way of veggies and everything like that. I recommend that you get your veggies and your greens and your fiber and stuff in earlier on in your eating window, not right when you break your fast, but earlier on, and here's why. You're gonna find, because of what's called stomach distensibility, that your stomach shrinks a little bit and you're not gonna to wanna to eat as much. So if you open your eating window with eating a bunch of non-nutritious stuff, by the time you get towards the end of your eating window, you're not gonna have any room nor desire to really eat the fiber of the veggies that have more overall volume. So it's a good strategy to break your fast with protein, then an hour or so later, then have a bunch of greens, then have a bunch of fiber. That way you're getting that out of the way, you're getting the important stuff in, and if it keeps you satiated, eh, it's not the end of the world. Then you're just not that hungry later on, and that's not that big of a problem. I would also recommend that you get your fats in a little bit earlier on. Again, not right when you break your fast, but maybe with that second meal shortly thereafter. After. Why? Well, for one, we need fats for proper myelination, for our brain, for everything like that. There's a bunch of benefits there, but it's also a calorie thing. If you focus just on the carbohydrates, the veggies, and the protein, sure, you're going to feel like you got a lot of food because there's volume, but you're not getting the calories that you actually need. Remember, I don't want you to end up in a cycle of caloric restriction after more caloric restriction after more caloric restriction where you get into this thing that you can't reverse. Okay, then you end up slowing down your metabolism and you have to fast for longer periods of time to get the same effect. We got to keep those calories up. So getting those good fats in, MCT oil, olive oil, avocado oil, really focus on those monounsaturated fats. I'm not opposed to saturated fats, but saturated fats should really only be making up like 15 to maybe 20, 25% of your overall fat intake, only because they don't have a bunch of nutritional value. Like if you look at olive oil with the hydroxytyrosol and the different antioxidants that are in olive oil, and you compare that to saturated fat, saturated fat is just a fat. Okay, sure there's benefits with myelination and the brain and the nerves and everything, but you're really not getting a lot of nutritional value and I don't want to replace fats that have nutritional value with a fat that is just kind of a placeholder. Now, what about some tactics to have good habits while you're intermittent fasting or while you're practicing this kind of style? One of the best things that you can really do is have a plan, okay? 
Figure out your structure, which days per week you want to fast. And I recommend a good cadence of just every other day to get started. Every other day, 16-8 fasting is a perfect strategy. You can fast every day, you just have to make a concerted effort to make sure you are getting enough calories in during the time you are eating, okay? So be paying very close attention to that. But some of the habits, you wanna have things on hand during your fast, okay? You wanna have coffee on hand, you wanna have green tea on hand, you wanna have club soda, things that are carbonated that might keep you satiated. Have those things on hand so that you don't reach for something that is gonna to totally break your fast. The same thing goes for your eating period. Have those things on hand. Have the protein ready to go. Have your protein shake ready to go to just add milk or water. That way you can just know what to break your fast with. Have your chicken already cooked. Because one of the hardest things is when you're hungry at the end of a fast, is prepare, it's preparing food. You're hungry. Okay, so you start adding things to it. You start justifying why you could add more of this, more of that. Have your breakfast meal prepared already, and it's gonna make it that much easier so that you can just jump right into what you should be eating. Another thing is making sure that your sleep schedule is on track. Okay, with intermittent fasting, it's easy to try to extend your eating period way too late into the night, and that's gonna mess up your sleep in general. So if you set a sleep time for yourself, it's gonna make it so that you stop eating appropriately. I would recommend that you stop eating at least an hour and a half before bed, preferably two to three hours before bed, so that your circadian rhythms and environmental cues can be aligned. It makes a very big difference. So remember to check out Zero Fasting and join in these two challenges that are happening this August on the Zero Fasting app. And you can check out that link down below. See you soon.